Hello, my name is Catherine Drummond, and today's lesson is on how to finish um, a piece of needlework into a scissor fob. In order to make a scissor fob this way, you're going to need to collect a few things. First of all, you'll need a piece of needlework that is uh, two designs that are exactly the same size, surrounded by a border in backstitch. So these designs can be exactly the same, like these are, if you want, or they can be two completely different designs. And if you like, they can actually be on two separate pieces of fabric. You just need to leave this border all the way around each piece, this border of extra fabric. The back stitch line that goes all the way around should be really well secured in the back because the finishing depends on these stitches to keep everything secure. You're also going to need uh, a needle and thread. I like to use thread that matches uh, the thread that I've used for the back stitch. So for this back stitch, I used number eight pearl cotton in DMC B5200, which is um, a bright white. And this thread is the number 12 pearl cotton in the same color. And I like to use the 12 because it's uh, a thinner thread and it um, gives a nicer, finer line when you do your finishing. You'll also need um, something for the tie at the top, and I have made this um, twisted cord for the tie, and I am also going to have a tassel. The, the tassel is optional, but I really like them, so I add them to a lot of my ornaments and scissor fobs. We're going to set these things aside for later. For now, I'm going to turn this over. And the first step is to finger press the excess fabric um, in towards the back. So I like to start with the corners and I just press with my finger so that I've got a little triangle across the corner and the back stitch line if you can see, lines right up with the edge of the fabric. And we'll do that in all four corners. Once the corners are folded in, then we'll fold in the edges. And you want that back stitch line to be right on the edge of your fold. See that? And try to get the fold right to the corner. The corners want to bow out a little bit, but you show them who's boss. Okay, as you can see, all of the edges are folded in, and if you flip it over, it looks quite tidy. Um, all of that excess fabric is hidden. Now we're going to secure this thread in the back of the back stitches. And I like it to be really, really secure because this is what's gonna hold your scissor fob together. So I will whip stitch over the tail my thread and under the back of the back stitches that outline the designs. And if I'm using uh, a piece like this where I've got the two designs on one piece of fabric with the back stitch line down the center, I like to use that center back stitch line for this. And then I'll come to the front of the work right in the corner where those lines meet. So now we're going to fold this in half 
and you can start to see what your scissor fob is going to look like. So now what you want to do is slide your needle under the back stitch on one side of the design and under the corresponding back stitch on the other side. So it should be the first one in the corner on each side. If you have two separate pieces, you'll do exactly the same thing, but they just won't be joined here. And then you'll work your way across, going under the back stitch on one side and under the back stitch on the other side in a whip stitch. And if you pull that tight, you'll see it starts to make a seam. And you're never piercing the fabric. You're just going under these back stitches. And now you can see why it was so important that these back stitches be very secure and that you secure your thread in the back of the work really well. So you can see here that it's making a pretty little seam and we're just going to work all the way across to the corner now. If you want to, as you're making these stitches, you can incorporate beads, which gives a pretty little beaded edge. So for this one, I added um, a Mayuki Delica bead on every second stitch. And then a three millimeter Swarovski crystal in the corner with a Mayuki Delica bead at the end just to hold it on. And those beads are also in this scissor fob design, so it really matches nicely. For this design though, I am just going to use thread. I'm not going to use any beads. As you can see here, I've almost reached the first corner, so there are still two sides that are open. Now it's time to incorporate the tie and the tassel. So I have found that the best thing to do um, for the tie and tassel is to use the twisted cord that I made. And there's a, a video on my channel on how to make a twisted cord and use that to tie the top of the tassel. So those are really um, securely put together. And then tie all of this in a knot. And this knot will be inside the scissor fob, so it won't show. And because the tie at the top and the tassel at the bottom are tied together, neither one of them will pull out when you're using your scissor fob. So it's really nice and secure. And full disclosure, I didn't actually think of that myself. It was my mom who thought of that. So I like to pull on each thread in the knot, each cord in the knot, so that I get a really nice tight knot here. Okay, so all of this can be inside your scissor fob. So, tuck that all inside the scissor fob so that the end with the tassel is sticking out the corner. And then you just continue with whip stitching these stitches together. And 
if you can't get both of them with one stitch. Just get one side and then the other side with two separate stitches, but it does make one whip stitch. So you want to have that in the corner. And I like to sew right through that tassel. Of course, I like to jam it right into the corner so it's nice and tight. And sew right through to the other side for a little extra security. I'm trying to do this in a really inconspicuous way so that these stitches don't really show. Okay. And then you start on the other side with your whip stitches. So as you can see, I've gotten almost to the second corner here, and I just have one side left to do. But I just wanted to um, point out how to do a corner. So in some forms of needlework, the corner is different from the rest of the work. But in this finishing technique, basically all you do is you get to the corner, make sure that the two corners are lined up, and then continue. Now, before you close up this side, you'll want to make sure that any ends are tucked inside. It's all nice and tidy. And then you'll want to stuff it with some, I just use polyfill, polyfill stuffing. If you want, you can stuff it with emery um, but you'll need to make a little lining um, if you want to use emery for sharpening your needles and polishing them. Because the emery is quite fine and it would just fall out um, through linen like this. The fabric I've used here is a 32 count linen. And the uh, fine sand that is emery would just slip through. So you'd need to make a little muslin liner to go in here. But I'm just going to fill mine with this polyfill stuffing and fill it until it is as fat as you like it. And once it's as fat as you want it to be, you just continue to whip stitch it closed. Now I've almost reached the third corner. And you want to make sure that this cording is squished into the corner as far as it can be. And then keep going with these stitches. but some of them might have to go right through the cording. Depending on how thick your cord is. around on the other side. Okay, and you could leave it like that and just secure your thread. And then I like to run the needle right into the pin, right into the scissor fob, and then cut it off at this end. 
but before I do that, I'm actually going to whip stitch this last side. So this isn't a functional side, this is just one line of back stitching. But in order to make it look more like the other sides, I'm just going to whip stitch this side as well. So I've completed the whip stitch along that fourth side, and now I'm just going to tie a sewing knot and then plunge my needle in through the edge and out a little ways away and this tucks that end inside and then I'll just use a pair of scissors to snip that off and it'll disappear right inside. So now we've got our scissor fob all completed and all we need is a pretty pair of scissors to add to it. So I'm going to use this pair and you put the loop through your scissors and then put your whole scissor fob through the loop. So you want to make sure when you're making that loop that it's going to be long enough to do this. And there we are. A pretty scissor fob. I like to have a scissor fob for every pair of scissors, which is a challenge for me because I actually have a lot of pairs of scissors. But uh, I'm working on it. I hope this has been um, an informational video for you and that you enjoy finishing scissor fobs as much as I do. Happy stitching!